Good morning. Good Chicles, the country church, Marion, Texas. A short drive to worship the Lord in a relaxed atmosphere. 1 John chapter 3, first three verses. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning, for the reminder of the tremendous love that you have for us. Lord, we just pray for our worship time this morning, that your name would be exalted. We pray for Dave and the praise team as they lead us, and we lift up our pastor as he comes to proclaim your word. Lord, we pray that you would use your word and draw men and women to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, it's good to see everybody this morning. Turn to four or five people. Tell them your first name so you'll know who you're worshiping with today. I love that special music, Lynette. It really bothers me because I, I do not know the second verse of any hymn in the world. If it's not on the big screen back there, I've got a lip sync. I just can't. Uh, it amazes me. I can sing Kumbaya, I guess. I had to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> not... Not, not now, I want to practice first, okay? <laughs> Who says you can't have fun in the house of the Lord, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, brother, let's do it. It's all about Him. Amen. And in this passage, we're reminded once again, it's really all about Him, the Lord Jesus. Amen. And John wrote with such simplicity, such clarity with a love for the Lord Jesus Christ that it comes across so clear and so powerful. And there's just several thoughts that we have this morning as we consider that it's all about him. He begins with the love of God, and what a place to start. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. John begins with, what manner of love? In other words, how do you describe something that's indescribable? The Greek term here is exotic. A love that would be foreign to the human heart. Behold what manner of love, what exotic love, a love that humans can't comprehend or really understand. A love that's so divine and so pure and so passionate that it's beyond description. So many times we quote John 3.16. We see it at the football games. We see it everywhere. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved. Well, what kind of love would God have to give his only begotten son? You see, I can quote it, but I can't comprehend it. What manner of love? And John probably wrote this under the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit with a greater grasp than probably some of the other disciples because John had this personal relationship with the Lord. And that's why when somebody comes to know the Lord, we encourage them to get into the book of John 
so that they can see, so that they can comprehend, so that they can experience this personal relationship with Christ. You know, John didn't even refer to himself as me, John, you know. <laughs> you know, he, uh, he referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And so he understood, he comprehended this. Well, this love was bestowed upon us. And the Greek text is even stronger. Behold what manner of the love the Father has permanently bestowed upon us. Not hit or miss, not temporal, not conditional. Behold what manner of love that the Father has permanently bestowed upon us. Now you talk about a privilege. You talk about a blessing. You talk about a benefit. I was talking to one of our salesmen and he was talking about how the company had gotten to where they were dangling a carrot. And I don't know if you've ever seen the old caption of the donkey trying to catch the carrot and he's just going like this and he never gets to the carrot. Well, this kind of love is not us chasing a carrot. He's given us the carrot. Behold what manner of love the Father has permanently bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. Now you have to think about that for a moment because some of y'all are still seeing things in black and white. And your television's got a crack in the screen. <laughs> You've got to get a hold of this one. Be, to be called the sons of God, you've got to wrap your thoughts around that. You've got to have a sanctified imagination at least to grasp it. I, I, I picture this walking into a group of people and they said, have you met Butch Eichels? He's one of God's sons. Wow! What do we do? Are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. You hear me sing in church? I do a wonderful job. The sons of God is what the scripture says. Now the world can't comprehend us because it couldn't comprehend him. Paul wrote, and he says, but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness unto him Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. <clears throat> I've had women come up to me and say, Brother Butch, I wish my husband would do this. I wish my husband would do that. I said, let me ask something. Is your husband born again? Is your husband saved? Well, no. I said, then don't expect him to act like a saved person. Praise God, at least he's not a hypocrite. You know, the thing of it is, is direct your prayers, direct your prayers to his salvation rather than your comfort. Thank you, one out of the whole group here. <laughs> <coughs> you know, it's one thing to look into the mirror and say, I am somebody. But it's another thing to look in the mirror and say, I am somebody for whom Christ died. I don't care what the rest of the world thinks. I am precious in his sight. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. I love that hymn that says, The love of God is greater for than tongue or pen could ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels song. The big question is, do you know that type of love? Amen. Behold, what manner of love. And then secondly, he talks about the confidence from God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. 
And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. He says to the believer, Behold, saved ones, those who have been born again, now are we the sons of God. This is so important for us to understand because so many can't say, I know for sure that I'm saved, that heaven is my eternal home when I die. Friday I visited with Ricky Ware and some of you have asked about how he was doing and and uh, he said, Preacher, you know how you always say, do you know that you know that you know that you're saved? He said, I can say amen. I know amen. that I know that I know. I was close, but I know that I'm saved. Amen. And then he said this, and I thought, if, if he goes before I go, I want to use this in the sermon. And he was at the Methodist hospital, and they had a cross on the wall. And Ricky can't hear very good, and he sir can't see. And he said, but I can still see the cross from where I'm at. Whoa! Can you see the cross from where you're at? That'll preach. Well, do you know, now I'm a child of God. Not maybe so, hopes he hopes so, could be so, it'd be nice. John writes to the believer, now are we the sons of God. You know what blesses me is the confidence that we have in Christ and in salvation. We're, we live in an uncertain world. We don't know what's going to happen, what's going to take place. We live on pins and needles and everything. But John said, those of you that are all shaken by all these things, now are we the sons of God? We get this from the word, 2 Corinthians 5, 1, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We know this. Now, I digress here because I can't help it, and I'll be in trouble afterwards, but I'll never forget my dear brother Neil, when I surrendered to preach, giving me verses to use for various occasions this, at, at, at a funeral. We know that if our earthy house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. And my first funeral was a guy that didn't know the Lord. His wife didn't know the Lord. His kids didn't know the Lord. But he had a niece who knew somebody who knew me. And they asked me if I would do the service and the niece was saved. And so I was trying to get encouragement to her. And I was going to quote this verse, 2 Corinthians 5.1. Instead, I, I turned to 1 Corinthians 5.1 and I read, Brethren, it's commonly reported that there is fornication among you. <laughs> People say, you didn't. I say, I did. <laughs> God knew it was probably more precise than... <laughs> But John says to the believer, we know. There's a confidence there. The sixth verse, therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we're at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Always confident. Verse 8, we are confident, I say, and willing, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Confidence, confidence, confidence. For the believer in Christ Jesus, Paul wrote, Timothy, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. It's sad when people see Christianity like an NBA team. I'm playing hard, but I don't have a contract and I hope I don't get cut. That's the way a lot of people view Christianity. I'm playing hard, but I don't know if I have a contract, and I don't know if I'm going to be cut. 
some of these poems that people come up with and some of the songs that we sing I thank God that Dave brings biblical songs to us I like country western but these songs about my mama's mansion is higher than mine she's closer to Jesus all of the time you know give me a break I don't know I got that in for free I think I'm not <laughs> Thank you. I didn't have to pay for that, huh? <laughs> now, now this, it doth not appear what we shall be. What comes here after? Do you know that there's a lot of people, even Christians, that believe we're going to become angels when we die? You know, a lot of guys think that their wife is an angel because she's up in the air and harping all the time. That's not it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's easier to get forgiveness than permission. <laughs> but isn't that sad? Do you know the bookstores don't sell Christian books anymore? They sell angels. And we're into angelology. And we're worshiping angels because the majority of people think that's what we're going to be. Because they've been flitting around from bush to bush down here and we might as well flit around up there. We're not. You know, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 6, 2 and 3, Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know you not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? You see, we know how it'll end up. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear... We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. When he shall appear, not if he shall appear, when he shall appear. Not if he's coming back, he's coming back. Could be any time, any time. Could be morning, could be noon, but we know he's coming soon. Amen? Amen. I'm not a prophet nor a prophet's son like Amos said but personally and now make sure you got this down personally I didn't say biblically but personally I believe that Jesus will come during the four years after the election <laughs> that's just me he doesn't have to but when I read the scriptures in Luke 12 40 Jesus says be therefore also ready for the Son of Man cometh in an hour when you think not. And we're living in a time when we thinketh not. There's very little thinking going on. To be like him. To see him as he is. Not as the carpenter's son. Not as the babe of Bethlehem. Not as the suffering servant but as King of kings and Lord of lords in all of his majesty and all of his glory we shall see him as he is. You see, you can either see him as the soon coming King of kings or you can see him as judge. Choice is up to you. Now we know when he appears like him we shall see him as he is. We'll be gravity defying and high sky flying. And you can write that one down. We absolutely know the Greek text reads. The love of God. The confidence from God. And then he talks about the hope that we have in God. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure this hope 
this hope, this, this hope. You see, we use that as wishful thinking or as a possibility that something could come to pass. We hope. <coughs> when really, the biblical definition is one of confidence. You see, in 1 Corinthians 13, we read of faith, hope, and charity or love. Hope is solid. Hope is substantial. This hope is faith in Christ. It's all about him. Paul wrote Timothy, I mean Titus, and he said, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our blessed hope isn't Donald Trump. And it sure is the world isn't Hillary Clinton. Our blessed hope isn't the Republican Party, and it sure is the world isn't the one we've had the last eight years. I know I studied there, stuttered there a little bit. Personally, I think God rigged the election. Now, don't try turning in him, turning him in, though. And yes, I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote for the party that defends marriage, def defines marriage as one man and one woman. I'm voting for the one that protects the unborn. I'm voting for conservative, biblical, moral values. And if I'm in the more minority, so be it. I'd rather stand for the Lord Jesus Christ than go down with the devil. But my blessed hope isn't in the White House. It's in the church house. And God has given us the answers. Are we headed down a slippery soap slope? Yes, we are. Are we devolving rather than evolving? Most certainly. Where's the hope? If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sins, heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, my ears attend unto the prayer that's made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name be there forever, and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Second Chronicles 7, 14 through 16. You see, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground, in case you didn't get it, is sinking sand. Paul wrote, he said, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. And right now they ought to be playing the theme from Rocky. <laughs> I may be battered, but not broken. Why? Because my hope, my confidence, my salvation rests on and in the solid rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know him personally? You see, for years I knew about him. I had read about where he walked and how he had talked and the miracles that he performed. And I knew about him, but I didn't know him personally. And it's so important that you know him personally. And you don't have to take that from me, but you need to take it for Jesus. Because Jesus said to those, depart from me, you that work iniquity, I never knew you. Not intimately. Not personally, I knew who you were because I created you. But do you know him? Have you been saved? Are you born again? 
Are you a Christian? See, these words were all foreign to me. I'd give you the name of my religion, where I went to church, the education course that I completed, and I stood before the whole church and I repeated the Apostles' Creed. I was a member of the church, but I wasn't a, rem a member of the born-again believers in Christ Jesus. Do you know him? If not, it's not that complex. You think God died on the cross openly, his only begotten son before the whole world, and then he wants to hide salvation to you? Not hardly. Let's get it down to where a little child can understand it. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you called upon him not to just take care of your ingrown toenail, not for the in, uh, impending operation or anything else? Have you called upon him for salvation? Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me of my sin and to come into my heart and life and save me. It's so important because it's all about him. Have you identified with him? Showing the world... I believe that Jesus died for me, that he was buried, and that he rose again, that I'm, I'm dead to myself, and I'm raised to walk in this new life that he's given to me. You see, when I accepted Christ, he immersed me into the body of Christ. From the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, I was immersed into the body of Christ. Water baptism is an outward testimony to that fact. It's an outward expression of an inward possession. Have you identified with him? And do you have a church home? Not just have you showed up, have you joined up? You say, I'm saved, I'm identified. I want to unite, I want to come alongside. I want to put my shoulder to the wheel. In these latter days, I want to be known as I am known. I want to take a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ and live for him, not only in this place, but from this place. And you have a decision to make this morning. Every one of us will. Will the decision be for his honor and glory? Let's stand together and pray. Father, we do thank you for your word, for your power, your presence, for what you want to do in our midst. But Lord, we have to humble ourselves. And part of that is letting go and letting you have your way. Right where we're at, if you don't know the Lord, that you'd pray, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I can't save myself. Would you come into my heart and life and change me? Make me this child of God now, not when I die. And help me to know it today. Help me to go public with my profession. Whatever that decision, Lord, may it glorify you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. God speaks.